2019 electricity exam question three. Right, so we've got capacitors built into rubber speed bumps can be used to sense the number of cars entering and leaving part of, part of buildings. One particular speed bump consists of two uh, 0.687 meter squared metal plates. When no car is present, the plates are separated by, what is that, 5.19 centimeters or 0 0.05 meters. Um, and it's just air, so rather dielectric is just air, which means it has constant of one. Show the capacitance of the capacitor. It's 1.7, uh, 1.17 times 10 to the negative uh, 10 farads. So we need to get our formula sheet, and this is a show question, so here's the formula for capacitance. This is if you're going to try and build a capacitor. Um, so we have capacitance equals the permittivity of free space, epsilon naught times the dielectric constant times the area divided by the separation distance. Um, and because this is a show question, we need to have the formula, then we need to have the substitution. So the permittivity of free space um, is on your information sheet, just 8.85 times 10 to negative 12. So let's chuck that in. 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12. Oops, that should be 12. Times 1, because that's a dielectric constant. Um, and then times the area. And it says the area is... 0 0.687, 7, and then we're going to divide by the separation. And this is in meters squared, which is good, and this needs to be in meters. 0 0.0519, um, and that all e equals 1.17 times 10 to the negative 10, um, which is what it says. So it equals 1.17 uh, times 10 to the negative 10. Farads because they are the units for capacitance. So it is. Um, right, capacitors connected in a sensing circuit, uh, connected to a sensing circuit below. Um, so we've got a simple series circuit, a resistor, a capacitor, and we've just got a voltage reader there and a voltage reader there, and this is going to be just current there. Um, when the switch is closed, current will begin to flow and charge the capacitor plates. Sketch a graph to show how current changes. And when the switch is closed to when the switch capacitor is fully charged. Calculate the values for at least two data points. Um, calculate the values, two data points should be included. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out the max current. And to do that, you just need to pretend the capacitor doesn't even exist. So I max is just going to be equal to V over R. So initially when you first put the switch, the capacitor is completely uncharged. So current would flow as if it was just a regular circuit. Um, so that's just going to be 6 divided by a 12 ohm resistor. Um, oh, that's easy. It's half an amp. How useful is that? Um, so that is the max current, and that'll start off at the top of the graph. Um, also, we need to find the time constant of the circuit. We need to find how much. So every, like for five, uh, five time constants, the, the whole capacitor will be fully charged by then. So the current would have decreased to zero. It would have charged up, no more current flowing. One time constant, the uh, the capacitor would have charged up by 63% of the voltage, which means the current would have dropped by 63% um, because it's been charged up by 63%. And that, that's all to do with exponential functions. Um, why is it that capacitors charge up exponentially? Who even knows? It's one of those mysteries of the universe. Um, why the exponential just tucks in there. So when right. Tau equals RC, because we need to find out what the time constant is, and that's just going to be 12, because that's the resistance, times capacitance 1.17 times 10 to the negative 10, and that should give us some tiny incidency time constant. And we can see we get 1.1, uh, 1.4 times 10 to the negative 9 seconds. 1.4 times 10 to the negative 9, um, so, and just something we need to consider. Um, I'll just, where am I going to put this? Ooh, I'm going to pause, chuck some scales on the graph. So I know the max needs to be up to 0.5. And I know the maximum time constant is just going to be, I'll just go shift answer, ooh, delete that. Shift answer times 5. So the maximum time, so it'll, it'll be completely charged up and the current would be down to zero at seven, basically seven times, seven nanoseconds it would have charged up. Um, so I need to have somehow 
up to seven, but maybe I'll make this seven here, I'll make it into tens, because I'm pretty sure there'll be ten lots of squares. So I'm going to chuck down the uh, um, uh, axes, and then I'll plot it. Right, so I've chucked my axes on, I just went, and this is, I should put this in amps, um, and this is in seconds, and I've just chucked, because it's times 10 to the negative 9, I just went 1 to 10, and this is times 10 to the negative 9, because everything's in nanoseconds, just, it's just easier. Um, and now, I need to find out, so one time constant's 1.4 seconds, so 1.4 nanoseconds I should say, so it's around about here somewhere, so I need to go 0.5, and you go 0 0.5, 5 times, uh, oops, 0.5 times 0.63, and that'll give me the, oh, hold on, times 0 0.37, 37, whoops, because it's going to decrease by 63%. Um, so if it's 63% off, it's 37% of the original price. So now we have a current of 0 0.18 amps, uh, 185 amps. And that'll be at the time of 1.4. So I'm going to go up to 0.185. If I can get there somewhere. And 1.4 is about here. There's my first data point. Um, and I'm going to just chuck it in. So I'm going to have 0.185 amps. Because it's asking for calculated values. I can't even bother writing it down here. At 1.4 times 10 to the negative 9 um, seconds. Um, right, so I'll plot the, oh, now I'm going to go times 0.37 again, because I must decrease by 37%, and then double 1.4 gives me 2.8, so 2.8 is about here, and I need to go down to point, ooh, zero, zero 0.06, so that's point 0.1, so 6 is probably about here-ish, and we're at point 2.8, so we're about here-ish. Um, and oh, I'll do one more point again, 2.37, down to 0 0.02, so 2, 4, 6, 8, oh, no, probably about here-ish, and we need to go 1.4 times 3, because um, this will be our third time constant, so 1.4 times 3, which means at 4.2, somewhere about here-ish, we need to be at point zero two five. it's probably about here-ish, I'm being real rough, um, because you only really need two. Oh, I'll chuck this one in as well, actually. This should be, what current should have that been? That should have been 0 0.068 amps, and that should have been at time, uh, two time constant, so 2.8 times 10 to the negative nine seconds. Right, that are two time constants. Five time constants we've established is uh, about seven seconds, so here's gonna be about zero, and then I'm just gonna go sideways, I suck at doing graphs, and I go, and I know it starts at five. Here's my first lot, so I'm gonna go down, cut through that one there, cut through that one there, curve it round a bit. Oh, there we go. I mean, it's not amazing. I didn't do the best job in the world, and I probably should have stretched my axes out a little further. Um, but I mean, hey, close enough. Um, Right, I think that's all I need to do, yep. Right, so, show after the capacitor has been fully charged, the car passes over the speed bump, the weight of the car pushes the capacitor, oh, after, anyway, increasing the capacitor is 2.3 times 10 to the negative 10 farads. Assume the amount of charge on each plate has remained unchanged, show the voltage of the capacitor at this moment is uh, 3.05 volts. Um, so this is, what do we got? Capacitance, um, oh, what am I? yeah, I'll use that one. So charge is equal to CV. It's on your formula sheet. Um, and we have charge initial, amount of charge is equal to charge final. So we had conservation of charge, um, which means basically the capacitance is gonna drop, so the voltage um, should, Decrease or increase? Capacitance increases, voltage should decrease. Yeah, because the plates get closer together. So this is just going to be straight up like, uh, how am I going to do this? I don't know what to do. Um, this is going to be a show question, so I need to go capacitance initial, for, uh, voltage initial is equal to capacitance final, voltage final. 
Um, and now I'm gonna rearrange for voltage final because this is just to show that it's 3.5 volts. So capacitance initial, voltage initial, over capacitance final equals voltage final. And now I need to substitute in the numbers. So the initial, initial capacitance is 1.17 times 10 to the negative 10. Um, the initial voltage, uh, fully charged. So when it's fully charged, the supply charges to the capacitor, charges up to the supply. Um, so basically it means this will be six volts. Um, so times six divided by 2.3 times 10 to the negative 10, um, and that should equal 3.05 volts. Hey, look at that, we actually managed to prove it. So 3.05 uh, volts. Um, I'll just chuck down the bottom. Vf equals 3.05 volts. Um, that's it. Right, shuffle over. Last question, explain, we've got, explain the effect the new capacitor will have on the readings recorded by the ammeter and voltmeter immediately after the capacitor plates are pushed together. And it says calculate the maximum current through the circuit. Um, so I'll just pause, write out the full answer and then explain. Right, so what I've said is as charge is conserved, we have initial charge is equal to final charge because the circuit hasn't been, um, it's conserved previously because when the plates initially, when the plates were not that there, charge was conserved um, immediately after, and then the current will start to flow and then it'll be unconserved. But in that little initial period, um, it'll be conserved. So capacitance final increases, so voltage across the capacitor decreases. We can see now the supply has a greater voltage than the capacitor. So you can sort of see here that six volts. This has dropped to 3.05 volts, so you'd assume now current's going to start flowing this way. It'll start flowing to start charging up the capacitor to the supply voltage, so now you get a non-conservation of charge. So initially, so the whole, I'm, I'm invoking conservation of charge only for an instantaneous amount of time, and then it doesn't really apply after that, but that's all that matters. So we can see that supply voltage is supply has greater voltage than the capacitor so current will flow to charge the capacitor back to the supply voltage that's like the simplest explanation i could give um, and then i use crash off uh, some of the voltages and a closed loop equals zero so i said some of the voltages equals zero and a closed loop um, this is a conservation of energy um, law um, and then i've just done a closed loop so it's been six so i started this way so it went positive six volts and then minus 3.05 volts minus, um, what have we got? 12, point, uh, 12 times the current, which is just IR, which gives us voltage equals zero. Basically, the, the in a circuit, the sum of the voltage should equal to zero. Um, so I end up with six, or minus six, plus 3.05, divided by 12. I think I'm gonna flip around the negatives. I could probably just, oh, I should have just shifted the minus i to the other side. And in fact, this does actually end up as being, this should equal minus i, should equal positive, because the minus i goes on the other side, my mistake. Um, so it equals positive 0.246 amps. Um, yeah, and that's it, that's all there is.